In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of what's sometimes referred to as the endomembrane system. This describes how certain organelles in eukaryotes are connected in their function. In particular, I'm going to be discussing the nucleus, the rough ER or the associated ribosomes on the rough ER, the smooth ER, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi and other vesicles that might be present. The main function of the endomembrane system is to make and deliver proteins to their final destination. Proteins in the cell act as enzymes, transport proteins, signaling hormones, and a host of other functions, and making sure that they're made in the correct amounts and delivered to where they need to be is critical to the behavior of different cells. These activities and this endomembrane system, of course, exist only in eukaryotes because these are the types of cells with internal membrane-bound compartments or organelles. These same functions exist in prokaryotes, but not within these specialized organelles, and they're organized a little differently. They're not going to be talked about in this lecture. Here's a quick view of some of the organelles involved in the membrane system and how they're arranged. You can see the nucleus at the top, pretty much surrounded by the rough ER, a very highly folded membrane structure, Again, a folded membrane structure usually means that uh, it's being folded in order to increase the surface area, a clue that the most important activities for that organelle are occurring at the membrane surface. The rough and the smooth ER have connections. Rough ER is uh, the portion of the endoplasmic reticulum that is studied or associated with ribosomes. You could see that a subsequent step in this pathway is to have materials from the ER transported to the Golgi. The Golgi then will sort these materials and send them to different places in the cell or even outside of the cell. Let's take a little closer look at the nucleus, which in some ways is like the cell's hard drive or the cell's cookbook. The nucleus is where all the genetic information, all of the recipes for making protein, are stored. If the nucleus is like the master cookbook, then if any particular protein needs to be made, a copy of that recipe or that gene must be made, and it must actually be exported or leave the nucleus. This is done through the use of specialized pores or openings in the nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane known as a nuclear pore. The RNA copy of the genetic information leaves the nucleus and will then travel to a ribosome, either a ribosome free-floating in the cytoplasm or one that's attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Here is a somewhat busy slide with some information blocked out depicting the creation of the RNA copy and its export from the nucleus and association with the ribosome. The ribosome in this analogy is taking the recipe and decoding it much the same way that a chef would take a recipe, read it, and mix the raw ingredients. Except in this case, the raw ingredients are amino acids and the finished product is a specific protein with a particular amino acid sequence which should allow it to fold into a specific and uh, impo functionally important shape. This ribosome is a large collection of proteins and RNA, usually found in two subunits, with a lot of different complex features and very important and varied function. Here's another view of the ribosome. Again, you could appreciate the presence of many different proteins shown in a, a sort of a light blue color and the RNA structural components shown in a taupe or tan color. Note th these components actually give the ribosome structure. Separate RNA molecules known as messenger RNAs actually contain the information that is decoded. Those messenger RNAs are not shown in these depictions. Different from other membrane-bound organelles, a good way of thinking about the ribosome is that it is just a very large, very complex enzyme that is responsible for creating proteins. 
The ribosome can create proteins by decoding an RNA. It could do this in the cytoplasm, or it can do this while attached to the surface of the ER. If associated with the ER, the ribosome will typically read an RNA that's present in the cytoplasm, but generate the protein and, in essence, give birth to the protein so that the protein is contained within the inside, or the lumen, of the ER. That protein has not been exposed to the cytoplasm. Again, the protein is sort of the finished product or the meal that's been generated via this recipe. The protein can continue to travel through the maze-like endoplasmic reticulum. In the smooth ER, protein synthesis is not occurring, typically, but protein modification may occur. Here is one typical modification that can occur on proteins shown. This is where small molecules can either be added or taken off of a protein after the amino acids have already been linked together by the ribosome. Again, this is a little bit like bringing a meal to a certain station in which condiments are present. Things that add a little flavor or a little extra functionality to a meal or to a protein in this case. Here's another example or another few examples of different modifications that can occur. Some of these modifications will attach fatty acids or lipid type molecules to a protein, allowing them to associate with the membrane. Viewing the system as a whole, you can see how the nucleus stores the information, which is then copied into RNA, translated into protein. The protein then is modified and can be packaged at the Golgi, traveling through vesicles in between some of these different or organelles. Proteins, or a collection of different proteins, packaged in vesicles, either at the Golgi or leaving the Golgi, can travel to different parts of the cell where they may be, ne may be needed. They could also fuse with the plasma membrane in a process known as exocytosis and be released from the cell. One good example of this is how certain neurotransmitters are made and delivered. A neuron will produce a neurotransmitter, included or an enzyme, let's say, that affects neurotransmitters and their presence in, um, in the synapse between neurons. Uh, these will be produced in the ER. They'll travel through this endomembrane system and they'll eventually be released from the cell through exocytosis.